Next is restrictions on giving the loan by company for purchase of its shares. Application of company law to banking and insurance. You need to maintain the accounting standards while preparing the financial statements. The registrar of a company is a person who will actually uh, sign for the registration of a new company. Hello everybody, a warm welcome to one and all. I'm Abhilash Chandra from the Department of Commerce and Management in Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. Welcome to the next session. Now here from this session, you will be understanding about the real company law and you will be actually getting the sections also that is under which section this law was implemented and why this law was implemented. So the first one we go with the introduction that is the Companies Act 2013. Now please understand this Companies Act 2013 is applicable to other sectors such as banking companies. Now, the first one is banking companies, insurance companies, electricity companies and etc. So when you understand what really happens with the companies and banking. Now there is totally different, right? Companies is different. Banking is different. Then we have electricity uh, companies are different. And one more is what? Insurance companies are different. But in the 2013 Companies Act, all these three things are also involved. Now you need to understand that we had a company law stating company law stating a special act called companies act 1956 in this act we never had these three things together with the companies act but now the companies act 2013 which we call it as a revised companies act has included these three sectors also in their act now however the act excludes these companies from its purview for some sections which are governed under the special acts under which this companies are formed. Now, sometimes you need to also know that the all the acts are not included in Companies Act 2013. There are few sectors which are not included in the Companies Act 2013. Let's check what are the things which are there. Now, the first one here is application of company law to banking and insurance. So, what are the things which are applied to these things. The first one is fraudulent inducement to lend money. Now what exactly this fraudulent inducement for lending money is all about? Please understand here. Any person, any person who either knowingly or recklessly makes any statements which is false or misleading with a view to obtain credit facilities from any bank or fraudulent inducement shall be liable for action under 47 that is under section 47 that means knowingly or unknowingly if you go for any false statement so that you can get credit facility from the bank then you are liable to get punishment under section 47. So this is what the first application which the 2013 Companies Act have given. So and this is called as fraudulent inducement to lend money. Second one is punishment for fraud. Now without prejudice to any liability, any person who is found to be guilty of fraud shall be punishable with imprisonment. Now here you need to understand that and you can ask me a question, Sir, Vijay Malya have done so much fraud. Now why is he not being imprisoned? Now let me tell you, the minute you understand the company law and if you go with the practicality of it, you have a lot of loopholes as well as you have more restrictions when it comes to imprisonment. Now you can always go for a show cost notice and then you can get a bail also because of the lack of strength in the law which was induced in the Companies Act of 2013. Now talking about Vijay Malya what really happens here is now he has gone to US and then UK and from there he actually go, had gone to many other countries now he settled in UK. Now he is considered as a UK citizen rather than the Indian citizen. So here you are supposed to know that there are 
two laws which you are supposed to follow one is the indian law as well as the other nation where he belongs so he is not an Indian right now, what he consider himself as, he is a UK citizen. So, this is what for the Indians, the law 2013 Companies Act is all about. The same way there are many people who have actually taken this law as a joke and they have gone to some other country and got the citizenship of that country. Now, let's go with the next one that is, for a term which shall not be less than 6 months, but which may extend to 10 years. That means anybody who goes with a fraudulent act in the uh, business, now he can be imprisoned for not less than six months. It is not less than six months, but which may extend with like 10 years and also liable to pay fine, which shall not be less than the amount involved in the fraud, but which may extend to three times the amount involved in the fraud. So here what happens is the Government of India have given a special uh, kind of act that is called Companies Act that is a revised 2013 Companies Act where they say about the punishment for fraud. Now what is the punishment for fraud? I will be writing it here. Now one thing is what he can be sent to jail. He can be sent to jail for less than not less than not less than six months and this can extend this can extend for 10 years so this is one of the thing right and one more thing is plus plus right he will need to give whatever the fraudulent amount he has taken that is whatever the amount he has done a fraud amount plus right you all need to understand that whatever amount he has actually done a fraud he should give it and it should be not less than that but the extension of it is what it can be three times the amount he has done the fraudulent act so it depends on the court how the court can go with it but they can't actually impose more than three times that is what the law says and they cannot get less than the amount which they have done the fraudulent act so these are the two criteria where the punishment for fraud will be given Next is restrictions on giving the loan by company for purchase of its shares. Now there is something called restrictions which are given. Now no public company, please understand here, there are two types of company, private company and public company. In a private company what happens is shares cannot be transferred but when it comes to the public company, shares can be easily transferred. So understand this logic, now understand this. No public company shall give loans, guarantees or financial assistance for the purpose of any shares in the company or in its holding company. That means here within the company they will not give any preferences or any uh, help to other people so that they will get the shares from the own company or the holding company. When I say holding company that means what? Now there will be too many companies which the parent company have. So the parent company will be holding many subsidiary companies. So that subsidiary company shares also will not be given to you. Next is circumstances. Now what exactly the circumstances is? No company shall directly or indirectly purchase its own share. You cannot uh, buy or you cannot sell, right? Please understand this. If if a default is made in repayment of any term loans or interest payable thereon to any financial that is fraudulent, indolent or banking companies. That is here what happens is no company shall directly or indirectly purchase its own share if a default is made. So you are supposed to always see that you should not be a defaulter. That is what the circumstance says. Prohibition on acceptance of deposit from public deposit from the public itself. So, prohibition on acceptance of deposits from public deposit from the public. That means no company shall invite, accept or renew deposits under this act from the public except in the manner provided. So, they can only go with public deposit but they cannot go with the real one. So here prohibition is there, right? Prohibition is actually there. Next one is financial statement. Please understand how to read this. 
Section 129, subsection 1, that is how you are supposed to read, that is called financial statement. Give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company. It must comply with the accounting standard notified under the section 133. That is what you are supposed to go. That is, you need to maintain the accounting standards while preparing the financial statements. And the last one here is powers of the board. That is under section 179. See, if you don't remember the sections, no issues, but you're not supposed to write some other section and then write something else. So it is better you people don't write the section, but you are supposed to write the sub points or the main points, that is powers of the boards. Now here, board of director, BOD is called as board of director. Board of directors shall exercise powers on behalf of company by means of resolution passed at meeting of board, namely to borrow money. So the board of director can actually go with the resolution of the board and he can actually take that borrow money to grant loans or give guarantee or provide security in respect of loans. So here what happens is the board of director themselves, they can take this authority and they can imply everything that is they can borrow money, they can grant loan or give guarantees or provide security in respect of the loans. So these are the things which usually happens. Let's go with the next one that is restrictions on power of board. Now we got to know what the board of directors can do but what are the restrictions? Now under section 180 it says to sell, leave or otherwise dispose of the whole or substantial, the whole of the undertaking of the company or where the company owns more than one undertaking. So you are supposed to know what exactly this uh, undertaking is all about. Now when the board of directors can actually give a guarantee and all, now what is the restrictions they have is, they have the restrictions under section 180s that is to sell the leave or otherwise dispose of the whole or substantially the whole of undertaking of the company. Now they can do that. The next one is loans to directors. Now the loans to director is always under the section 185 to any of its director or to any other person it whom the director is interested or give any guarantee in connection with any loan taken by him. That means he should always give his consent while giving a loan. Now he can actually go for the loan or he can actually go for the uh, director's interest wherever he wants to give it to a person, he can go with it. But what exactly it is, it should be his consent, his signature and his authority should be given it as a consent. The last one is penalties. Now penalties goes with section 185 subsection 2 that is not less than 5 lakhs and may not exceed more than 25 lakhs. So here what happens is if anything is penalty is given to anybody that person will go with this. The extension here is please understand one is 5 lakh rupees is what the thing is 5 lakhs is what you are supposed to pay or they can extend up to 25 lakhs. Now that means what? They cannot extend more than 25 lakhs. They should be or they cannot uh, go with less than 5 lakhs. The minimum is 5 lakhs and the maximum is how much? 25 lakhs. This is what the penalty is issued to the people whoever does any kind of fraudulent act. Now the next topic here is registrar of companies. Now what exactly the registrar of companies is? The registrar of a company is a person who will actually uh, sign for the registration of a new company or renewal of a new company. Now registrar of companies that is called ROC appointed under section 609 of the Companies Act covering the various state and union territory. That means he will cover the union state as well as the union territory now are vested with the primary duty of registering companies and LLPs. Now what is this LLPs? LLPs is limited limited liability liabilities partnership partnership right limited liability partnership called LLPs. 
floated in the respective states and the union territory and ensuring that such companies and LLPs comply with statutory requirement under the act. So what is that they are supposed to do is the companies register or the registrar of companies will only give the two certificate that is called incorporation certificate and commencement commencement certificate and they are the people who will actually see that whether all the statutory requirements are covered under these acts and finally the registrar of companies that is roc will give a signature and a seal and they tell that yes you can actually run the business so these are the things which you people should know that is ROC is very very important in the next session I'll tell you about the functions and powers of ROC where you will also know about the chamber of uh, minister affairs also you will actually get to know. So these are the things which you people should know please understand that the 2013 companies act which is revised have lot of things which are added. Whenever you have free time students please do research more about the 2013 companies act. Companies Act is not like the other management uh, subjects where you can actually write in your own words. Companies Act and the company law is all about what? What exactly the law says you are supposed to write. And if you have any doubt regarding this, please do call us, message us. We are always there to help you. Thank you so much. I'll see you when I see you.